Hello class, this is Miss Augustine and today we are going to begin talking about chapter 11 which is titled Thermochemistry and this chapter is about the flow of heat that occurs in physical and chemical changes. So our intro to thermochemistry includes definitions. So what is thermochemistry? It is specifically the study of the heat changes that occur during physical processes and chemical reactions. So we need to understand what we mean when we say energy. Energy is the capacity to do work or supply heat. Unlike matter, it is weightless, odorless, and tasteless. Um, however, it is detected because of its effects. So on a sunny day, if you go outside and stand in the sun, you feel warm, and that's because you are detecting the effect of the energy that is coming to you from the sun. Potential energy is energy that's stored. Typically for chemistry, we're talking about energy stored in the structural units of a compound, so the bond energies. So chemical potential energy is that energy that's stored because of bonds, and the stronger the bond, the more energy that's stored. So different substances store different amounts of potential energy. Um, class example, classic example is gasoline. It is a substance that has a great deal of chemical potential energy because the bonds store a lot of energy. So heat energy, um, in chemistry terms, we have special words and letters that we use. So heat is either represented by the letter Q, lowercase or uppercase, mostly lowercase, and this funny little triangle H, which is read as delta H. And any time you see this little triangle, which is the Greek letter delta, in chemistry or physics or math, it means change. So delta H is change in heat. So energy that transfers from one object to another is what we're talking about with heat energy. And energy as heat flows always from an area of greater to an area of lesser concentration. And it's transferred because of these differences in temperature. Always flows from warm to cool or hot to cold, higher to lower. So now we have to talk a little bit about endothermic versus exothermic, which you probably learned about in biology class. So again, we also have to revise or remember the law of conservation of energy. We've said it several times this year. The law of conservation of energy states that in the course of any chemical process or physical process, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is conserved. So that means we can always account for all of the energy in physical and chemical processes. All the energy in a chemical process can be accounted for as work, stored energy, or heat. So the flow of energy in a system takes into consideration the direction that heat flows during a physical or chemical change. And we typically start to think about whether we're talking about the system or the surroundings. So if energy flows from the system to the surroundings, it would be considered as giving off energy. And if it's flowing from the surroundings to the system, it's called called absorbing energy. And that is what we talk about when we talk about endothermic or exothermic. So if heat is flowing out of a system, from the system to the surroundings, the system has a negative heat change and again it is considered exothermic. Whereas heat flowing into a system is considered positive delta H and it is endothermic. So a good way to think about this, this is my example, um, when you understand if I am cold in the winter, I'll light a fire in the fireplace and I'll go and I'll stand in front of it. The fire is exothermic. It is giving off energy and I am absorbing that energy. That's why I'm standing in front of the fireplace. So my delta H is positive and the fireplace's delta H is negative. In a similar fashion, if I'm in my house and I'm nice and toasty and it's zero degrees outside and I go and I stand outside without my coat on my front yard, I am going to lose energy. So my delta H will be negative because energy flowed from me 
to the surroundings. So you're thinking of which way the heat is going. So an endothermic process, heat flows is represented by the symbols, again, delta H or Q. And for endothermic, it is a positive uh, value. Heat is flowing from the surroundings to the system, so the system is increasing in energy. Therefore, delta H is a plus. An endothermic process absorbs energy from the surroundings. An exothermic process is a process where heat is flowing out of the system. So heat flow is negative for an exothermic process. It's flowing from the systems to the surroundings. So delta H is negative because the system itself lost energy. An exothermic process releases energy. So delta H or Q is negative. So now we have to talk about heat of reaction. And the definition here is the quantity of heat either released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. And again, we talk about it with a special word, enthalpy, and that is H, the letter H. And enthalpy H uh, refers to the heat content in a system. And enthalpy change is delta H, the amount of heat absorbed or lost by a system during a process. So that leads us to a thermochemical equation. And that is an equation. So your garden variety chemical equation, like we've used before, where we write, you know, H2 plus O2 yields whatever, um, that also includes the quantity of heat either released or absorbed during the reaction as written. And it depends on the amount of reactants and products. So if you're doubling a reaction that requires 100 joules of energy, then doubling the reaction would require 200 joules. So when you're writing a thermochemical equation for an endothermic reaction, heat is written with the reactants since it is required for the action reaction to occur. So here, in order for water in its gas state to break down, break apart to hydrogen and oxygen, energy is required specifically 241.8 kilojoules per mole of water. Whereas if we do the reverse of that, an exothermic reaction, heat is written with the product since it is released as the reaction occurs. So here, when hydrogen meets oxygen to form water, that is an exothermic process. Energy is released. And again, we have to write that energy, the 241.8 kilojoules has to be written as part of the products because it is released. It's produced. So with exothermic reactions, energy is released to the surroundings. The products have less energy than the reactants. And an example would be water freezing to ice. In order for that to happen, the water has to release energy to become ice and the delta H would be negative. So this is an energy diagram, and we're showing here the reactants are higher than the products. And again, an example would be um, hydrogen plus oxygen uh, combining to produce uh, water. And again, its exothermic energy is released. And then for an endothermic reaction, energy is absorbed from the surroundings, products have more energy than the reactants did. An example would be ice melting. It has to absorb energy in order for that to take place. The delta H would be positive. So if we're looking at an energy diagram here, the reactants are lower in energy than the products. You have to add energy in in order for it to react and go to products. And so delta H is positive. And using my same previous example of water uh, breaking apart to form hydrogen and oxygen in order to take place, that reaction requires an input of energy. So we would have to input energy, in this case, 483.6 kilojoules, in order to get to the point where the products could form. So that is all for today. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.